Good morning. This is pre-calc chapter 12.3, and we're going to basically encapsulate 12.1, 12.2, 12.3 into one big problem. And this is a tangent line problem, a limit problem. This is going to be an awesome deal. This is one of those problems where I could give you this one problem and it would encapsulate everything. It would do every limit, every tangent, every slope at an instantaneous rate of change. This is it, this is the, the big one. So what I want you to do is make sure you have this worksheet downloaded and you're just gonna follow along with me on the worksheet and, uh, and do it with me. So it says, consider the following function. You will need uh, a graphing utility to do this. So it says, consider the following function, um, x cubed minus one over x minus one. Uh, you can, um, just a second. Yep, Randy, you can put that right there. I had a special delivery. All right, so what you should do, um, and I took the time to do this, is I took the time to put it on, I can't really see that on my sheet here. <laughs> For some reason, some days it shows up better than others. There it is, ah, finally. All right, there it is. So I put on my graphing calculator and I'm gonna graph it. You should graph it also. And the problem says um, on here, it actually says, graph it by plotting a few, point, few, a few points to make sure you're accurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trace a couple of points also on here. So if I trace negative two, uh, my calculator says one, two, three. So I know there's a point at negative two, three. Negative two, one, two, three. Um, I'm gonna trace negative one, and I get one. At negative one, I get one. Trace zero, and I could have gotten these off of my table of values. It says, oh wait, at negative one. Oh, okay, so it's right here. I must dip down a little bit past it. And then I'm gonna trace two also. And I got two seven. Uh, oops, let's trace one. Trace one. Oh, trace one. It tells me there's nothing. At one, it says nothing. But if I trace two, I get seven. One two one two three four five six seven. And what I should probably do right here is I should probably go look at that table of values, and see what's going on with the table of values. So I'm going to go to second table set. Um, I'm going to start my table at um, I'm going to start my table at that one value where I think that hole is. I'm going to change it by 0 .001. So I started it at one. I changed it by 0 .001. And I'm going to go to my table, and I notice at one, it tells me there's an error. At one, it says error there. So I know right away that there's a hole in the graph, and it's a very small hole but there is a hole in that graph um, right here at the one and then wherever that's gonna cross region. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw this in now. So it looks something like this. And you know what, I can even be more specific than that because I notice on each side of the one, there's a 2.997 on one side of the one and a 3.003 .003 on the other side of one. So even more specifically, I know there's a hole right here. So I'm gonna put that little hole right in that spot, okay? So we have a graph, we have a pretty good idea of what we wanna find. And it says, find the limits algebraically and show your work. And I have x cubed minus one over x minus one. Okay, so find your limits algebraically. What that means is you're gonna use direct substitution, you're gonna plug that number in. So the function is x cubed minus one all over x minus one. I should be able to take the four and, and shove it directly in. So I get four cubed minus one all over four minus one. Uh, four times four is 16 times four is 64. Uh, 64 minus one is 63. Over four minus one over three. So the limit as x approaches four with direct substitution tells me I can take four, plug it directly in, and I get out three. All right, let's do the same thing for zero. I get zero cubed minus one all over zero minus one. 
I get zero minus one is negative one, zero minus one is negative one, negative one over negative one is one. So one of my answers was 63 over three through direct substitution. One of my answers is one through direct substitution. And then I'm gonna plug in the one. One cubed minus one all over one minus one. One minus one, one cubed is one, minus one is zero. One minus one is zero. And I get this zero over zero, which is actually has a name. It's called the indeterminate, indeterminate, A-T-E, indeterminate form. It's the indeterminate form, okay? And what that means is there's probably some algebra that we can do to this thing. Factor it, wipe out some things, do some things to it that will allow us to find the limit at x equals one. And I can actually go up to my graph. This part says, draw the hole in the graph shown in problem two, list the coordinates of the hole here. Well, the hole is the x coordinate of one, which we already knew from our graph, from our error at one. And then I already went on my table. We already, we already went ahead and went on our table and we found, well, close to one on this side, and close to one on this side, those two are coming together and they're approaching three. So it ends up that there's a hole at one, three. Okay? That is some of the limit stuff that we've done. And remember, we were, there is a limit there because those two ends of the graph, they, they come together at that point. And that point is very microscopic. It's very small, but it does exist there. And if you were able to zoom in far enough on a, a utility, you would actually find that hole. You would, you would see where that hole is. Anyway, here's where we're going to need some room. It says, on the back of this paper, because you're going to need some room, find an equation for the slope of the tangent line at any point on the graph. Follow these steps. Number one, you need to factor it and wrap it out. Number two, you're going to apply the derivative formula to the new equation. And I need enough room on this that I'm going to um, go to, to pen and and marker um, and do this on my board here uh, so that we have enough room. So the function was f of x, you can see that, yep, f of x equals x cubed minus one all over x minus one. And the first thing it says is to factor it and wrap it. So the top of that is the difference of two cubes. So I'm gonna apply that difference of two cubes formula. Cube root, same sign, cube root. Cube root, same sign, cube root. Cube root, same sign, cube root. Square the first term. Multiply the two together and change the sign. Always plus, square the last term. That factors into all of that. And it's a set thing, it, it, it just is what it is. Um, you can look up some in difference of cubes. It, it was in a previous video. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you can uh, Google sum and difference of two cubes and it'll show you how to do that. And the reason we do all that is so we can do this. And I got x squared plus one x plus one. Uh, that's my new function value with my, uh, with the factors wrapped out. So right now what I wanna do, because this was a process that we did on 12.2 is I want to think, okay, what is the limit as X approaches that hole that we found as one? And what you can do after you factor and wrap out is you can actually take the one and plug it in. And what do you know? You get three, which is what we found on our table of values, which is what it looked like when we were on our graph. So all of this kind of lends itself to, hey, what we got on the graph was pretty good. Okay, but here's my new functional value factored and whacked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the derivative formula to that. Okay, and this is where it gets kind of big um, and fun in, in my eyes, big and fun. So we're going to find the limit as x goes to, as h goes to zero, as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. The first part tells me to take x plus h and it tells me to plug it in for all the x's in this equation. 
So I'm going to take the X plus H, I'm going to plug it in there, and I'm going to plug it in there. It becomes the limit as H goes to zero of X plus H squared plus one X plus H, or just X plus H plus one. I took that, I plugged it in there and there, and then I tacked on my one. Minus F of X, so minus the function, and this is the function, X squared plus one X plus one, all over H. And that's just like applying a formula. It's just like using a quadratic formula. It, it's just a formula. This thing is the derivative formula. And now I'm gonna go to one color, and what I should be able to do is I should be able to do a bunch of algebra, whack a bunch of stuff out, and then find the limit. So we got the limit as h goes to zero of, I'm gonna foil this in my head, x squared plus two xh plus h squared. That's how that factors, or foils. Plus that, plus x plus h plus one, minus x squared minus one x minus one. all over H. And we're hoping, if we did this right, <laughs> there's only one thing that'll happen here. You're gonna get things to cancel out. And if you don't, you probably did something wrong. So the X squareds cancel, the ones cancel, uh, the X's cancel. Wow, that was a lot. Okay, here we go. The limit as h goes to zero of 2xh plus h squared plus h all over h. And that top right there, that top can be factored. The limit as h goes to zero of, I'm gonna pull an h out of each one of those. Um, h out in front, h out of that leaves me with 2x, h out of that leaves me with 1h, h out of that leaves me with plus one all over H. And what I can do then is I can whap out those H's and I can find the limit as H goes to zero of uh, 2x plus H plus 1. And you do all the factoring and whapping stuff so that you can now, when you get to the bottom of this after you factored everything and whapped everything out, you can take that zero, that H value zero, and you can plug it in for that H right there. So I'll plug that zero in. And that's some easy algebra. I get 2x plus 1. And what is that? Oops, you can't see it. I get 2x plus 1. And what is that? That is called the derivative. It is the slope of the tangent at any point on the graph. It is also called dy dx. It is also called an instantaneous rate of change. Oh my gosh, it is so famous. It's got a lot of names, okay? But it's 2x plus one. So let's use that. Let's go back to the problem and let's see, uh, uh, let's see how we can use that, okay? So here we go. Here's kind of the second half of the problem. Okay, so um, on the back, because you're going to need some room, apply the derivative formula to the new equation. I'm going to write m of, oops, let's go here. Let's do this. Slope of tangent, m of tangent. Is equal to 2x plus 1. That's what I got there. Okay? That's what I know. That gives me the instantaneous rate of change at any point on the graph. So now here I am at the point 27. At the point 27, we want to know how fast is the graph changing at 27. Well, the slope at 27 is 2 times 2 plus 1. You see what you do is you take the x value here and you plug it into that equation for that x. And I got 5. The slope at 27 is 5. Let's go look at it. 
Here I am at one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's five. So I could either go up, I don't know if I can't, nope, I can't get up there. One, two, three, four, five, and over one and draw it in, or I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, and over one. And it looks about like here's my slope of the tangent line. Boom. I got it. Look at that. I, I graphed the line. It's supposed to hit there. That's supposed to be where it's tangent. Got a little bit of a wonky line there, but that's okay. So I got it. That's cool. Uh, find an equation for the tangent line that goes through 2, 7. So an equation is I take the slope and I take 2, 7. My slope is 5. My point is 2, comma 7. And I apply the formula y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, y minus my y1 value is 7, my slope is 5, I got my x value and I got minus 2. Those two points went in for those two spots. That slope is 5, y minus 7 equals 5x minus 10, y equals 5x, we'll add 7 over to the other side, 5x minus 3 should be the equation for the slope of the tangent line. Let's just go back and look. Does it look like my line's gonna hit about negative three? Man, we're doing a really good job right there. Look at that, one, two, three. Up one, two, three, four, five over one. Looks really good, looks really good. All right, so here we go. So we got that. Oh, we graphed the tangent, check. We knew that was coming. So we already graphed the, the tangent, okay. Use your calculator to complete the following. We're just going to do this by hand because we, uh, we haven't actually done the, the calculator version of this. Find the slope of the tangent line at negative 2, 3. Will your calculator find the slope? Uh, there's actually, I guess we kind of do need to do this on our calculator. There's actually a button that will find the slope of the tangent line um, on your calculator. It's under second calc. And... It's called dy dx, and it'll tell you, um, I think what you can do, the slope of the tangent line at negative two, yeah, okay. So here's what I want you to do. We're gonna go ahead and, and show you this as a, as a check for your, your work. So if you hit the second function key right there, and then you hit the calc button, it's uh, right there, okay? So I hit second calc. Um, in that um, one, if you have the updated software, if you have the older software, some of these don't have it, there's a button called DYDX. That's changing Y over changing X. That changing Y over changing X is a slope. So if you hit second DYDX, um, it'll take you back to the graph. And what you can do is you can type in negative two, and it will tell you um, at negative two, DYDX is negative three. So DY dx is negative 3, which I hope that's what we would have gotten had we plugged um, negative 2 into our 2x plus 1. Hey, let's do that. Um, 2x plus 1, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. dy dx is negative 3. And that works. And then the other uh, questions, and, and the reason I, I usually show you this on a calculator, it, it's kind of cheating. I'll be honest with you because it's your calculators um, calculating the slope. It doesn't give you the equation of the tangent line. It doesn't give you the equation of the, uh, of the um, tangent. It doesn't do any of that, but it does give you the slope. So it's a really good checking tool. So like we could do this really easily just to make sure we're doing it right. Um, I mean, we could go up and, and we could find, we could pick a point. We could pick a point. We could ask it. Um, what's the slope at that point? And we could type that, hit the dy dx button, um, type in the slope and, and see what it tells us and then match it up with what we got for an answer, which is kind of nice. But anyway, uh, will your calculator find the slope of the tangent line at the whole? Well, the whole value is one, right? We know the whole is at, it was at one, um, one three, right? Yep, one three. So we want to know, is a calculator going to do that? So let's go second calc dy dx, and I'm going to type in a 1. I just second dy dx, and I typed in a 1. I hit enter, and it doesn't tell me anything, okay? 
Um, in other words, it's telling me at that specific hole, the instantaneous rate of change of the graph is nothing because the graph doesn't actually exist at that hole. So will your calculator find the slope of the tangent line at the hole? No, it won't. The graph doesn't exist there. And how can there be an instantaneous rate of change where a graph is not there? It just, it's not. How fast is it changing where it doesn't exist? It's not changing. So that. So from the results of B, do derivatives exist at holes in the graph? No, they do not. They do not exist there. So wow, what a great problem. That problem took us about 20 minutes and um, it, it kind of encompasses a lot. Um, you're going to get another one. Uh, we, will, we will make sure we do the other problem. There's another problem like this. Um, and we'll see how well we can do on that one. All right. Good job. Good luck.